Um, obviously, it was, it was, um, I wish they were all kind of like that. They won't be, but um, good to see a lot of kids get uh, involved and a lot of faces. We have a lot of things to clean up, um, but certainly pleased with a lot of aspects. I know it's uh, Auburn's 800th uh, victory. There's been a lot of great staffs, coaches, players that uh, through the years have contributed to that, and we're, we're happy to, to be a part of those 800 wins. I think we're only the 13th program in FBS to, to have that, um, so it puts you among the elite. Can't say enough about our student section. I, I don't – I mean, they stayed. They're here two hours before the game when we get here, and they stay to the very end. And our band and cheerleaders and student section, they're incredible. And obviously our fans are always incredible. And um, so five newcomers with a receiving TD, most team passing yards and an opener. It should have been more. We, we had some drops and some a bad, two bad decisions by our quarterbacks. Um, so, um, solid, solid day. I thought defensively we were okay. Too many penalties, and um, you know I think DJ would 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 agree that we we miss a line too many times. Um, and you expect some of that in the opener because you're really not sure what you're going to see, and you don't, may have not worked everything that that you, that you see but we got to be able to adjust and, and line up correctly and I didn't think we uh harassed the quarterback as as well as as I had hoped so but man great obviously to celebrate a win with our team the eight times in uh school history is uh it's a good night and uh always good to play in Jordan Hare Coach, just the five penalties tonight for your team in total, and the two turnovers were late in the fourth quarter when the game was, you know, was was out of hand. Was this the the type of clean football you wanted to have in week one, or, or were you, you know, yeah, I, thought you to more? I didn't want the two turnovers. That that still irritates me. Um, doesn't matter what what uh, group you're with, we we work that constantly, and it's what we do on Mondays every day offensively. Every Monday is ball security Monday, and um. You know, it's frustrating to see those two turnovers for sure. I don't like that being on our stat sheet at all. Um, I thought the five penalties, I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's, you know, I didn't think the, the roughing the passer, you, you, you know, we talk about that all the time. You cannot pick the quarterback up. And that's just a foolish penalty that, um, that we can't have. And our DBs sometimes get a little sloppy and are not playing the ball and they're too handsy and that, Caught us a couple of times there, but uh, so we got to clean those up for sure. But the two turnovers, you know, I, I don't care what group you're on. That the expectation is we take care of the ball with our offensive hit. So a lot of times in games like this, coaches want to get out of it with no injuries and get to play a lot of players. That's always the case. Is there something else you can add to that that as a head coach you look for in a game that's so overly matched that you can take away from this? Well, I mean, I thought the execution early on offensively, particularly in the passing game, and we didn't call a lot of runs really. And um, well, if we did, they gave us the RPO. And uh, I thought our execution of that and young kids who've not played in front of the 89,000 here and in this atmosphere, they seem to be to handle it pretty well. So we're going to need those guys to play really, really well this year as, as our schedule is going to get really difficult pretty quick. Um, you know, I need to watch the film uh, and, and see kind of Peyton's got to clean up a few things too and that, that frustrate me. And he and the thing is he knows better. Um, we missed a wide open spot right on third down that is his first progression. And um, he, he knows that and he's I, I've got to get him to where that doesn't happen. Uh, those are going to be critical third downs in, in coming weeks. And he needs to get himself protected in the RPO game, and he knows how to do that. And that's that's a little frustrating when yeah, he still threw a touchdown, but he's going to take a shot in coming weeks that's not going to be very pleasant. I coach a lot of offense tonight. Uh, but do you feel like you maybe got out of this one without showing much on tape? Uh, obviously, it was a 
um, a 60 40 run pass ratio in favor of the run, you know, is that indicative of what we can expect moving forward? Or 60 40 to the run? Um, I'm sorry, pass. Yeah. Pass heavy. No, I know. I would like to be uh, the exact opposite, truthfully. Um, but but you, you guys that have listened to me, I don't care. I don't really get hung up on the rushing stats. I get hung up on what we average per run. Because, I mean, we can sit here and say, hey, we rushed it 60% of the time and only averaged two yards because we're running into bad boxes and stuff. That's not who we are. I believe we averaged almost 10 yards a rush tonight. And so that's really good. But there were a lot of runs called that they gave us the RPOs and that's who we are. And, um, but if we average nine yards of carry for for the, any game, I'm going to be really happy. Uh, but ideally I'd love to be 60, 40 the other way. We, we've seen a lot over the years where Coaches will get in games like this and, and just run the football and run a clock out. But you ran the offense and allowed guys to continue. How important is that for those young guys, young wide receivers, and really everybody to continue to execute the offense? Yeah, so it's a it's a balance in that because the last thing you ever want to be seen, you know, is like we were trying to to do something that was unsportsmanlike. And but it's game one, and Hank needs to run the offense, and Holden needs to run the offense, and. Malcolm Simmons needs to be, know what RPO to run. And so, you know, I just – we kind of just let them – we didn't intentionally throw any deep shots. They jumped off sides, and our, obviously that's what we do on on that. But the other the other throws were, were truthfully just in the RPO game and just trying to run the offense. Hey, Hugh. Um, Malcolm – Perry and Cam all get in the end zone tonight as someone who hit the recruiting trail hard specifically to upgrade at the receiver position. How satisfying was it for you tonight to see all three of them make an impact? It was it was really satisfying and enjoy, I enjoyed the – they're just young kids, man, and they just are enjoying playing and going through the experience, and it's fun to see them. And, um, you know, I thought Dre set a good tone for that room, and uh, Robert is a great – those two are really good leaders. And you know, obviously, we've talked about how talented those young kids are. But uh, I didn't, you know, if I could have uh, dreamt it up and said, hey, I'd love for all three of them to score, um, that would have been really nice. I don't, I don't know that I had a feeling that Cam would because I just I, I knew we could take some shots with him. Um, wasn't sure that we could get all of them in the end zone, but it's uh, really nice to see that. They were, they were quite excited for each other, too, which I love. You, how important was it to um, for the offense really and, and Peyton to get the ball down the field and uh, really add that explosive element to this uh, offense attack? Yeah, there's nothing like confidence, um, and you know that's something that we've always been good at is, is is creating explosive plays, and we weren't very good at that last year. And it's uh, certainly an emphasis of when when I brought Nick's on. Um, he knows how I feel about that. He knows that's the first cut up I watch on Sundays is I want to see the explosive reel from last year and I want to already know in my mind how we are going to try to create those. And um, I think the um, the players see that and hear me talk about that and hear Nick's talk about that and um, they understand it's an expectation. And um, if our receivers in those plays are in one-on-ones, they're open. That's that's the rule. And these shot plays are explosive opportunities. And um, and so that I think any time you have a game, even if it's like this, where you are able to create those, that it only builds confidence in the kids. And maybe they believe in our scheming and play calling better and it makes them make better plays. I don't know, but it was good to see that happen. Hugh, y'all started Tyler Johnson at left tackle, but Percy got in early. Y'all were rotating. Just mm -hmm. what do you think of those two guys, just kind of snap reaction and, and, and the offensive line yeah. as a whole? Uh, I hadn't watched the film on that. It's really hard for me to tell. I didn't, you know, in my conversations with Jake on, on the run game, we had a plan and, and they played us a little different. And so, um, 
but again, we threw so many RPOs even on runs, so it was really hard to tell. But again, we averaged nine yards a rush, so they had to do fairly well. Um, Tyler and Percy, we're going to need both of them. So I'm not hung up on who goes out there first or I want to grade the film and see who does the best, but we're going to need both of them. Just how encouraging it was it to see Town just have a really good night stepping in in his first collegiate game? Yeah, uh, he seems to uh, – he seems – you know, so we've had some kickoffs that have, have kind of gone squirrely in practice and stuff, but he gets in this stadium and it's like – He's right at home and and doesn't miss a thing. So you know, that's really good to see. We we're going to need him early in the season for sure. You had mentioned that the defense had a few misalignment issues, but overall seemed to play fairly well. Is there anything that you particularly liked that you saw from the defense, and then maybe something that you just as of right now would want to to see fixed? Well, I didn't think we uh, I didn't think we tackled too poorly, so that was good, um, but. Didn't, I guess the the biggest thing to me is I was a little shocked that we didn't crush the pocket a little a little better, um, you know. And I might be wrong when I watch the film, but it just it kind of felt that way. But uh, I mean, overall, it was a solid night and um, clean up the misalignments. And you know, we had a couple times where you know it's just technique stuff where we we brought somebody off the edge and he's. He's got the high train right to the up the field on the neck it or anything, and he tracks the the running back. You know we got to clean those things up. But um, all in all, we got a lot of kids in and 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 held Isaiah out and get, got his ankle some more rest. So um, hopefully we can learn from the mistakes we did make and, and be improved next week. Coach, going off of that on Monday, you said it wasn't clear who or what this team is at this point. It's going to take Saturdays to prove it. Obviously, a lot of Saturdays still left, but what do you take from this one? What was your message to the team in terms of getting to where you would like to be more Saturdays ahead? Uh, handle handle what's right in front of us. Um, learn from what we didn't do well tonight and and uh, take confidence in what we did do well and let's, let's grow from that. But we certainly hadn't arrived yet. And... Um, you know, but right in front of us is some some great opportunities in our home stadium, and got to handle the successes and failures both um, the same way. They both can be your enemies. They both can be your friend. So um, we'll see how the leadership handles. You know, us having a uh, good opener, but going to get much harder soon. Yep. Thank you, guys.